Southwest at the turn of the century was all too often the story of valor and violence seen through a hot haze of dust and gun smoke. But there was also another story, the story of a man whose deeds have largely gone unsung, though nonetheless heroic. A man who rode quietly in the vanguard of advancing civilization. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. town, nothing strikes such terror in the heart. In the past, Bluefield had known its share of mine disasters, just as it had known the riches and wild elation of a gold rush. When the alarm sounded in the old days, it could have been for any one of a hundred gold mines which pockmarked the nearby hills. But with those mines played out and abandoned, the alarm could only mean a cave-in at the Hubbard. The Hubbard was the one mine still operating, the one thing that kept Bluefield from becoming just another ghost town. Lately, the alarm had sounded often for the Hubbard. Ooh. You get him out yet? Not yet. You better come with me, Doctor. Here's the doc. They don't need him. They're both dead? They had a mercy on their souls. Need their names for the death certificates. This is Hank Welsh. That was Mike Malone. Next of kin. Hank has a wife, hasn't he? A wife and two kids. Mike has a daughter. She's up there waiting for him. How'd it happen? Faulty timber gave way. What's wrong here, Lynch? This is the fourth mine cave in in a month. Don't ask me. It ain't my fault. Whose fault is it? You're mine, Foreman. I only work here. Now, look, if you don't like the way this mine's run, you talk to Hubbard about it. All right, I will. All right, men. Let's get him out of here. Yeah, take it easy. <laughs> bodies out. You, you mean they're, they're dead? Mike Malone's dead? This is going to be awful for Kitty. The other fellow had a wife and two children. Clay, is your father in? Yes. I'd like to see him. What? Oh, sure. Come in. Malone and Welch are dead. It's a rotten break. Mike was a good man. I know. That's the awful thing about cave-ins. You never know when they're going to hit. They've been hitting pretty often lately. Oh, uh, hello, Baxter. What can I do for you? I was hoping you might do something to stop some of these mine accidents. If you got any ideas, I'd be glad to hear them. I'm a doctor, not a mining engineer. All I know is there's something wrong. In a little over 20 days, three of your men have been crippled and now two of them killed. You think I like it any more than you do? Isn't there something you can do to stop them? I'm doing everything I can. And how do you account for the fact that these accidents are increasing? Now, wait a minute, Baxter. I don't tell you how to peddle your pills. Don't tell me how to run my mine. Conditions at the Hubbard are no worse than other mines. I can show you statistics that definitely... Any time I need you to back me up, I'll let you know. Well, I was only... All you I... know about mining, you learned from books at that Milksop College. Dad, I don't think that... I didn't ask you to think. Now get back to your desk. Sorry I lost my temper, Doug. You see, 20 years ago, when I worked the mines of Virginia City, nobody cared whether you lived or died. Kitty. 
I just heard about Mike. I was going to come over... Take your hands off me. Well, uh, Kitty, you're not being fair. After all, you and I... Not being fair, am I? Well, I'm not to blame Maybe for... Maybe you're not to blame, but your father is. I'm going to kill you, you murdering skunk. Stay where you are. Wait a minute. Why should I be waiting for you? Let go of me. He murdered my father. Let go. Let go. Killing him won't bring your father back. The girl's out of her mind. You murdered Mike as surely as if you put the gun to his head and pulled the trigger. And I hope you choke on the money you made doing it. What are you talking about? Ask him. For weeks now, he's been shoring up the mine with rotten second-hand timber. That timber's sound as a dollar. It's as rotten as yourself. Ask the men working for you. Well, if that's what they think, nobody's forcing them to work for me. That's what I expected you'd say. Well, I'm glad you said it in front of your son. Maybe now the poor weak thing will be a realizing what a money grub and heartless excuse of a man he has for a father. Kitty, listen a minute. I've listened to you enough. Poor girl's out of her mind. Have you been using secondhand timber? Sure I have. But anyone who says that timber's rotten is just trying to stir up trouble. Maybe somebody ought to stir up some trouble. Where are you going? I'm not sure yet. Well, why are you looking at me like that? Is that timber all right? Of course it's all right. Miss Malone. Are you sure about those things you said? About the shorn in the mine? Yes. Ask any of the miners. Hubbard's been getting old secondhand timber from the abandoned mines around here. That way he saves himself the cost of freighting a new timber from Lake Washoe. But if the mine's not safe, why don't the men refuse to work in it? And where would they be getting the money to live on? Well, there's other mines. Not in Bluefield. Most of the single men left long ago. It's only the ones with families that can't afford to leave. A man with a wife and child and making four dollars a day don't save any money, Dr. Baxter. But if they all threatened to quit, he'd have to do something. <laughs> Hubbard would fire anybody organizing a thing like that so fast it'd make his head spit. What about you? You don't work for him. Are you daft enough to think they'd listen to a woman? They might. Well, since you're so interested, what about yourself? You don't work for Hubbard either. The men would listen to you. If you could get them together and get them to agree not to go into the mines. I'm sorry, Miss Malone, but I can't come in here and tell these men what to do and tell Hubbard how to run his mine. No. I guess you couldn't. It'd take a real man to stand up to help it. We've been waiting to have a talk, Doc. What about? I hear you kind of worked up about these mine accidents. Who told you that, Albert? This yours? You know it is. Put it back. You don't like it, somebody sticking their nose into your business, do you? It's got valuable medicine in it. I said put it back. Now get your junk and get out of town. Miss Malone, please. I've changed my mind. I'd like to help you fight Hubbard. Do you really mean it? I think it's time he learned a lesson. He'll talk to the miners. I'd talk to the devil himself if I thought it'd help. Oh, Doc, you're wonderful. I'm sorry. I, 
I shouldn't have done such a thing. I don't see why not. It's the first nice thing that's happened to me all day. Oh. That night at the meeting Kitty organized, I wondered where I'd gotten the nerve to stick my nose into something that was none of my business. And the response of the miners wasn't reassuring. However, they did listen politely at first and then with growing interest. I almost had him convinced to stick together and refuse to work for Hubbard until he'd made his mind safe when the door at the back of the hall opened. Well, you've had your say. How about giving me a chance to tell my side of the story? It's an open meeting. Thanks. Look, I'm just as unhappy about these accidents as you are. Maybe, in a way, they are my fault. But there's something you men don't know about. The ore from the Hubbard ain't assaying like it used to. That's right. The ore we've been getting lately don't pay more than $50 a ton. And that's why I took to using old timber. I had to cut down operating costs or shut down the mine and throw us all out of work. I suppose you didn't think of cutting your profits. I'm perfectly willing to work for less. If you men will do the same, take a pay cut, the men can't afford that. Well, it's the only way we can put in good shoring timber and still operate at a profit. We'll do whatever you men decide. I'll retire. I've made my money. We'll shut down the mine like Doc here wants. Close down the mine for good? Well, we can bring in fancy new shorn timbers and all take a pay cut. Look, Mr. Hubbard, the men aren't making enough now. Or we can go on just as we are. Look, Mr. Hubbard, the men can't afford a cut. Wait a minute. This isn't a question of money. It involves your safety. You're risking your lives. In other you... words, you don't care whether these men and their families starve. The mine's got to be run your way or not at all. I didn't say that. But there's other mines in other parts of the country. Uh, look, Doc, maybe you'd better stick to your pills. Hey, now, look, Doc, well, we worked here for Mr. Hubbard for quite a long time. Now, maybe those cave-ins were accidental. All right, all right. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Now, if you gentlemen care to adjourn to the New Orient, the drinks are on me. Thanks a lot, Mr. Hubbard. Come on, men, let's go. Thank you. Doc, I warned you to keep your nose out of my business. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to Elkton. I'm going to the governor and ask him to shut you down. Oh, Doc. Will you ever be forgiven me? I shouldn't have got you mixed up in such a thing. It's only the first round, Kitty. Come on, I'll see you home. I got an early start. Hubbard was getting away with murder, and I was sure the governor would listen. After money, you've got the wrong man. We ain't after your money, mister, but you're gonna learn to mind your business the hard way.
found him on the Oakton Road. Somebody beat the tar out of him. We'll take him to my place. Okay. Hurry. A rancher just brought Doc into town. He's been beaten up. Why'd you do it? If the mine's as safe as you say it is, what difference does it make if he sees the governor? You mean you think I had him beat up? Didn't you? Of course not. Then who did? Well, the boys were pretty sore at Baxter for trying to shut down the mine. They could have done it. A lot of people are still going to think you did it. Who cares what they think? I care what Kitty Malone thinks. You're not serious about that girl. I didn't realize until last night how serious I was. I can't have her thinking we had anything to do with this. Hey, wait a minute, that darn fool! Next time I need a nurse, I'll sure know where to look for one. <laughs> I've had lots of practice. Mike was a great one for brawls. Well, many's the time I've had to... The door's open. Hello, Kitty. What'll you be wanting? I came here to talk to... To both of you. We're not interested. Dad didn't have you beaten up. Is that what he said? Yes. And I don't think he'd lie to me. Why should you be an exception? You're only a son. Now, look here. I came over here to try to straighten things out, but if you're just going to... Hey, it doesn't matter who beat me up. The important thing is that your dad's endangering a lot of lives with that mine of his. But it can't be that dangerous, or the, or the men wouldn't work for him. Would you work down in the mine? Of course I would. Go on with you. Your father wouldn't be letting you. I'll work in the mine if I want to. Why should you? To, to show you how, how pig-headed and, and stubborn and wrong you are. Do you think he'll really do it? I mean, work in the mine. I don't know. Man in love will do a lot of things. In love? With me? Sure. Why do you think he came in here? Mr. Hubbard, you send Clay to work for me. What are you talking about? He showed up at the mine and asked me to put him to work in the lowest level. You mean Clay's down there now? Yeah. I just thought I'd check with you in case. What's that crazy fool trying to do? Get himself killed? There he is, Mr. Hubbard. our clothes on and get back to the office. No, Dad. I'm working here. Don't argue with me. Put your shirt on. Dad, I have to prove something to somebody. Well, you're proving this. What a fool you are. Lynch, clear the men out of the shaft. Well, move. put you up to this or why, but you're getting out of here fast. Why should I? Because I say so. All my life, you, you, you've told me that I didn't have what it takes to stand on my own. Yet every time I tried, you slapped me down. Well, that's all over now. This time, I'm staying on my own. Look, you're coming on your own two feet or I'm gonna drag you out. Timber was all right. I might be willing to risk it. 
that I've killed my own son. Somebody said it was play. Is that true? I'm afraid so. Oh, no! What are the chances of reaching him? The whole section of the mine gave way. I've got men checking the air shafts, but it'd be a miracle if one of them's still open. Well, I hope you're satisfied. There's Mike and now your own son. If I didn't love Claire, I'd be glad. Mr. Howard! Mr. Howard! One of the air shafts is open. I can hear him. Get off. Oh, let's go. It's this one. It goes through behind the cave end. Hey! 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 Can you hear me, sir? Dad! I can't move! He's alive. Thank God he's alive. Here's a rope. Give it to me. I'm going after him. I'm the logical one to go, Mr. Hubbard. No. He's my son. It's my fault he's down there. He's hurt. Wouldn't be safe for anyone but a doctor to move him. But you understand, there might be more cave-ins any minute. Do you do this for me? Let's just say I'm doing it for Clay. Let's go. He's right. How much longer do I have to wear this thing? Ah, you're doing fine. A couple more weeks. If I had such a pretty nurse, I don't think I'd be concerned about it. <laughs> Get on with your blood. <laughs> By the way, I saw your father this morning. You sure you won't change your mind? I don't want to see him. He's ordered new timber, new equipment for the mine. He's even taken out insurance on the men. I think he's trying to make up for what he's done. Do you think he's really changed? Trying awful hard. I think I'd meet him halfway. What do you think? He's your father, Clay. What did he say? Well, he. 
Ja. Ja. Sechs Tage. Thanks, Doc. Hubbard told me he fired the thugs that gave me a beating. And he'd taken care of the families of the miners who had been injured or killed. Yeah.